Imagine a British train capable of 160 miles per hour using cutting edge tilting technology to glide effortlessly around tight corners. In the 1970s, British Rail had a bold vision, a train that would revolutionize travel, outpacing private cars and even domestic air travel. This was the Advanced Passenger Train, APT, the world's first tilting train. It was meant to be the future of British Rail, a machine that could compete with Japan's Shinkansen and France's TGV. But instead, it became a national joke, plagued by technical failures, government neglect and media ridicule. The APT was ahead of its time, yet it was abandoned just as it was about to succeed. So what went wrong? And how did Britain invent the world's most advanced train, only to throw it all away? Let's dive into the rise and fall of the APT, the greatest train that never was. By the 1970s, British Rail had a problem. More people were choosing to drive or fly, and the railways were seen as slow and outdated. The West Coast Main Line, WCML, one of Britain's most important rail routes, was full of tight bends and steep gradients, limiting trains to just 100 miles per hour. Meanwhile, Japan had launched the Shinkansen in 1964, and France was developing the TGV. British Rail needed to respond. There were two options. Build a new high-speed railway, like Japan's bullet train, or invent a train that could tilt into corners and run faster on existing tracks. With no money for a brand new railway, British Rail chose the second option, and so the advanced passenger train, APT, was born. The APT was no ordinary train. It was packed with groundbreaking technology, including active tilting suspension, allowing the train to lean into curves at high speeds without throwing passengers around. Lightweight materials, making it faster and more energy efficient. Hydraulic braking system, designed for 160 miles per hour running on Britain's winding tracks. At its core was a hydraulic tilt system developed by British rail engineers which let the train hug the track while maintaining comfort. No other country had done this before. It was a world first, but there was just one problem. The APT looked perfect on paper, but in reality, it suffered from 15 years of delays, technical failures and funding cuts. One of the biggest issues? The tilt system. The train took too long to respond when entering a corner, making passengers feel seasick. And that wasn't all. The brakes were unreliable, making it difficult to stop quickly. The tilt clearance was too tight. There were fears that two tilting trains passing each other might collide. The electrical system failed regularly, leading to breakdowns and embarrassing delays. Despite these problems, British Rail pushed forward, desperate to prove the APT could work. But then came the worst PR disaster of all. On December 7, 1981, the APT made its grand debut, a high-profile trip from Glasgow to London, packed with journalists. But instead of wowing the world, the train broke down in front of the press. Passengers felt motion sickness. Newspapers ran headlines like Queasy Rider. Britain's most advanced train became a national laughingstock overnight. The next day, the APT suffered more failures and it was clear that the train wasn't ready for full service. The government lost faith, and within four years, the APT project was completely scrapped. But here's the twist. Britain abandoned the APT, but other countries saw its potential. Italy's Fiat Ferroviaria took British Rail's tilt technology, refined it, and launched the ETR450 Pendolino in 1988 a huge success. Fast forward to 2002 and Britain finally got tilting trains, but not their own. The Class 390 Pendolino, used on the West Coast Main Line, was designed in Italy using tech stolen from the APT. The irony? Britain had to buy back the very technology they had invented. The APT wasn't a failure, it was just ahead of its time. If given just a few more years, 
it could have been one of the best high-speed trains in the world. Instead, poor funding, bad PR and government neglect killed Britain's chance to lead the world in train technology. Today, only one APT remains, preserved at the Crewe Heritage Centre, a reminder of what could have been. What do you think? Was the APT a failure or was it abandoned too soon? Let us know in the comments. Like, share and subscribe for more amazing train history videos.